Hi, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Have you ever wondered what that awful smell or that strange smell was in your wine? Well, there are multiple factors that can contribute to those aromas. One of those is called brett. Today, we will be talking about brett. Brettanomyces bruxellensis is a spoilage yeast in wines. It's also known as Brett for short, and it produces bad aromas and flavors to wine, including aromas described as Band-Aid, horsey, barnyard, sweaty saddles, sweaty socks, antiseptic, and medicinal. The three most responsible compounds are volatile phenol compounds, which are known as 4-EP or 4-ethylphenol, 4-EG or 4-ethylguiacol, and 4-EC or 4-ethylcatechol. Britannomyces was first discovered as a secondary yeast in British beers back in the late 1800s. There are four other species of Britannomyces. Britanno is Greek for British, and Myces is fungus, so... Britannomyces means British fungus, as it was discovered in these English beers. Britannomyces bruxellensis, is also known as Decora, is mainly found in wines, but it has been discovered in other alcoholic beverages and biofuels. It thrives in alcoholic and low-nutrient environments. Britannomyces may naturally occur on grape skins, but it can also be brought into the winery with fruit flies or with previously contaminated barrels. Once in the winery, brett is almost impossible to eradicate, so prevention is absolutely essential. There are a number of control procedures one can take. Certainly, daily sanitation is critical. Another approach is to reduce your residual sugar in the wine and to effectively use sulfur dioxide. Another factor is to avoid high pH in the wine and to filter wine before bottling to reduce the risk of post-bottling microbial spoilage. So let's look at daily sanitation for a moment. General sanitation of the winery, the presses, the crushers, the must lines, the valves, etc., are necessary. For more information, see my video on winery sanitation. Regular cleaning of the tanks and barrels is necessary. And watch out for topping wines so that you don't contaminate your barrels with your topping wine that is contaminated. And finally, monitor your wines for microbial spoilage, as in this image here below. Brett thrives on residual sugar, so to reduce your residual sugar, start your yeast fermentation with a strong starter culture so that fermentation goes to completion. Be sure to aerate the must during its most active fermentation activities. Avoid temperature shock to the yeast when pressing. Try to maintain the temperatures during the pressing and for at least 12 hours afterwards. And then finally, check residual sugars at the end of fermentation. For the effective use of SO2, add SO2 when you're crushing at the beginning. Be sure to add enough free SO2 based upon your molecular calculations for pH, as observed here in the right-hand corner, where you can see that higher concentrations of free SO2 are required at higher pHs to produce the necessary molecular levels of SO2 needed to control microbes. Be sure to also add a single large dose of SO2 after any malolactic fermentation, because this is a time when wines are particularly vulnerable to brett. It's much better than doing a number of smaller, multiple doses of SO2. It is recommended to do one single large dose. Be sure to maintain that SO2 after transfers and during storage, as these things will diminish the active forms of SO2. For more details, see my video on how to make SO2 measurements. Barrel sanitation. Effective methods are hot and water rinses, 
hot water treatments are most effective at 70 degrees centigrade, you can do it for 30 minutes, or at 85 degrees, you can do it for 15 minutes. You can store your barrels with SO2. You can also use steam cleaning, ozone, microwave, and even the latest ultrasonic treatments as shown here on the right. There are a number of methods for BRET detection. The easiest and gold standard is plating on a Petri dish using BRET selective agar plates. These have compounds in them that specifically inhibit the normal growth of Saccharomyces yeast and therefore most likely going to support Britannomyces. You can see two images here on the right of specific media that have been used to grow Britannomyces only cultures. And what's interesting here is that you can see that the cultures have this interesting pattern on the top of the cultures and it varies with the culture that's grown. The problem with this method of culturing is that it takes time between 10 to 15 days. And by the time you actually realize that you have Britannomyces or can identify it as Britannomyces, it may have already taken hold of your wine sample. So this is a slow process, but it is a readily available method that most people can do. Other methods which are more rapid are fluorescence microscopy, but most people do not have an epifluorescence microscope to be able to look at a culture and identify the fluorescent microbes. Or one can do DNA testing, which is also very rapid, but again, this requires a laboratory that is capable of doing PCR, which is the polymerase chain reaction test with specific probes or flow cytometry using DNA-specific fluorescent probes. All of these require a technical capability above the average person, and you must send your samples to a laboratory. So there are a number of treatments for BRET. The most important, perhaps, is sulfur dioxide. By treating with sulfur dioxide, you can inhibit the growth of BRET. The Saccharomyces yeasts are generally more tolerant than BRET, but BRET is evolving, and there are now strains of BRET that are becoming more tolerant to SO2 with time, and so it's not the only answer. Other suggestions have been sorbic acid, which is used as a preservative in drinks, but it's proven not to be very effective in wines. Keeping the pH below 3.5 is inhibitory to BRET and will reduce its chances of taking hold in your wine. Chitosin is a treatment that can be used effectively in wines that have already got BRET, but some strains are effectively inhibited by chitosin, but other strains are only temporarily inhibited, and with time they will increase in population. So it's suggested that one should rack their wine relatively soon after treating with chitosin so that the population can't increase again. If one gets desperate, <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, the reason I say this is that one could use dimethyl dicarbonate, DMDC, at levels between 50 to 100 milligrams per liter. This is also a preservative in drinks, but it is relatively difficult to apply homogeneously in a wine, and it requires a metered dosing machine to effectively treat the wine with DMDC. One can fine with silicon dioxide and activated carbon to remove the BRET yeast, but unfortunately, these are likely treatments to affect the flavor compounds in the wine and impact the wine in undesirable ways. It should only be done under a little test trial of the sample before doing the entire wine to make sure that it's effectively doing what you wish it to. And finally, one can use reverse osmosis to remove bread. It won't remove it completely, but it will reduce the level. Again, this is a highly technical process that probably requires a larger winery or laboratory to perform such an action. Well, that's it. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video and would like to see or hear other videos like this one, then I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find more videos on viticulture, enology, and grape varieties. Have a great day.